Good day and welcome back to our videos on um, General Certificate of Education exam preparation and solving of model questions while making everything so clear to you out there. I would just like to request something from my audience that please, if you have more questions, especially from the GC ordinary or advanced levels of the General Certificate of Education exams from Cameroon, you're free to send them to me through my email. I will just show you something here. Uh, feel free, please. I have an email there. Send them to me and you would get maybe a free solution for at least one of the questions. It's best that you send me scan copies uh, to avoid errors. Sometimes we notice the exam questions already have mistakes. And to minimize them through copying, it's best to send me scan copies. Thank you very much. So our question of today that goes after the first part of the question the first part was about remainder theorem. Now we'll be talking about roots of quadratic equation. So we have a question that we are supposed to solve today. We are told that the roots of a quadratic equation, x squared plus 4x plus 4 equal to 0, are real and equal. Form a quadratic equation whose roots are minus alpha on 2 and 2 minus alpha, where alpha is the root of the equation. This is the same equation like that. So of course, we have only one root for this equation because we are told they are real and equal. You would have already learned, or if you have forgotten, that if in a quadratic equation we have two roots. Those two roots could be real and equal, real, different, or they could be complex. These are the three scenarios. We usually use what is called a discriminant to be able to yeah, explain that. But in order to be able to yeah, meet the time required for this question, it's important that we move ahead. I will from time to time, of course, give you, give you some extra information that is required at least to solve beyond just this question. I will start with looking at what we call quadratic equation and roots. Why do we call alpha and beta roots of the equation? That is because we know that if you have the roots, you can build a tree of the equation. So we are going to try to use that idea, start from beta and alpha and build the equation. So if root, the roots of an equation alpha and beta, this is the same like saying, the equation can be solved with two possible values of x, x equal to alpha or x equal to beta. This means x minus alpha is equal to zero or x minus beta is equal to zero. Of course, I can do that and say, if I have two numbers a and b, and one of them, one or the either is zero, their product will always be zero. That means x minus alpha multiplied by x minus beta is equal to zero. You've learned a bit of expansion, I think, in your lower classes, uh, how we can expand these two to a full quadratic equation. So in that case, I would take x and multiply by x, and I get x squared. I take x and multiply by minus beta, and I get minus beta x. I take alpha and I multiply by x, I get minus alpha x. I take minus alpha and multiply by minus beta, the minus and the minus becomes a plus, and I get plus alpha beta, and that is equal to zero. I see that there are some common yeah, aspects between these two terms. The x is common, the x is common, so I can factorize. Minus one is common, minus one is common, I can also factorize. But math is so beautiful, so we don't just write anything. I cannot take the minus one and carry it to the back, because it's a beautiful uh, subject. We have to also make sure our expressions look beautiful. I'm going to do that here. So then this can be written as minus, in brackets, alpha, plus beta multiplied by x plus alpha beta is equal to zero. So I factorize the minus one here and put in front and the x I put at the back. Actually, so we see that, oh, if I'm given the roots of an equation as alpha and beta, then the quadratic equation will be obtained by looking for the sum of the roots and the product. And once I have that, I can just substitute into this and I have the quadratic equation. So the roots are actually able to build the tree of the equation. In order to show you this relationship that I have here, it's best to compare these two. We have claimed that the alpha and beta I used to build is are the roots of this equation. So there should be something similar with them. If that is true, I can only compare these two equations if my the coefficient of x squared is 1. Because here you see, here is a. So I can make this 1 as well. To do that, it's simple. So I have a here. x squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. If I divide all through by a, 
to make the coefficient of this one, then I get an equation which is of the form b on a x plus c on a equal to zero. Now, if I compare these two equations, then I will see that ah, this coefficient should match this one, and this should match this. And then we see that, so the sum of our roots, alpha plus beta, should be equal to minus b on a. I just took the minus to the other side. It could just be minus alpha plus beta together is equal to minus b on a. So for the product of the root is simply c on a. So let's go to our equation in hand. So the equation given to us is x squared plus 4x plus 4 is equal to 0. And if we compare this with the standard version of the equation we see above, then we can say that, oh, this is a here. Poorly written. Sorry for that. So if we do that, we see my a here is 1. a here is 1. b is 4. And c is 4. If that is the case, we are told that the roots are equal. That means alpha is equal to beta. So in order to make the sum of the roots, the alpha plus beta will be alpha plus alpha because this beta is also alpha. I chose alpha because the next part of the equation is talking about alpha. You could just have also used beta plus beta, but then you may be a little lost when you try to look for the equation for the, 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 with the roots uh, minus alpha on 2 and 2 minus alpha. So if I do that, then I get 2 alpha on my left and I get minus 4 on 1 because that is b on a. b is 4 and the formula says minus b on a. Minus 4 on a. a is 1. Then I get minus 4. So I divide both sides by 2 and I say that alpha is equal to minus 2. I already have my alpha. I've been told that the new equation I have to form half these roots. So these are the roots. So it's minus the alpha that you would have calculated from the first part divided by 2 and 2 minus that alpha. Our alpha, we've calculated it to be minus 2. So the new roots of this equation will be, so what will be now, you can call it alpha 1 if you want, would be that and you call this beta 1 would be this one. So that is minus alpha on 2, minus minus 2 this is that there, so you become plus 2 divided by plus 2 is 1. And 2 minus alpha for the beta there is alpha, this minus minus, so this is 2 minus minus becomes plus and that is 4. So it means that I've, I have now my alpha 1 and my beta 1. I just need to look for the sum of those roots. So the sum of the roots is the alpha 1 plus beta 1 and that is equal to 1 plus 4 and that is 5. The product is alpha 1, beta 1, and that is 4 multiplied by 1, and that is 4. So I can just put it, I mean, we already indicated that if you have the roots, you can use this form of the equation, I've written it here once more for you. So I will just put the sum of the roots there, and the product of the roots, and my answer comes out. And you see, so this is the new quadratic equation. Thank you very much.